Welcome to the care and cleaning of a FabArm XLR5 Velocity. FabArm has recently been purchased by Cesar Granary out of Italy. This gun has been in the United States approximately five months. And we're going to walk through how to take care of this gun and clean it with regular maintenance. As with any semi-automatic gun, you are going to want to clean this after every use. And we talked to the gunsmith at Caesar Granary in Maryland and suggested they have a YouTube video to show how to take this gun down and clean it and suggested that maybe we would make it. And here we are. As with any cleaning of a shotgun, safety first, empty chamber, safety on. We're first going to start by removing the forend and the forend cap. Very simple. Stand the gun up. And we take off the beautiful Turkish walnut forend. You're now faced with a very simple decision and that is the removal of the cocking handle. The owner's manual shows that the cocking handle has a notch inside and with it closed they're suggesting that you would pry it out. However, I find that when it's closed it's wedged up against the inside of the receiver and makes it difficult to pull out. So the easiest thing for me has been, and I think you will find the same, is to simply set the firearm down. I put on a glove because it makes it a little bit easier, and I give the, the cocking arm a little tug. Sometimes it's a little more difficult than others. And out it comes. Simply uh, give it a wipe, very easy and there's a little residue on it. Now that we have the cocking handle out, we're going to release the tension on the recuperation spring with their tension release mechanism. And I'm going to hold the gun in place while I press the button and allow the recuperation spring to detension and now I can gently and slowly remove the barrel. As you can see, it comes out quite easily. You'll notice my right hand has stayed in place with the action bar as I've removed the barrel to keep it in place. Notice that the piston assembly has this insert and you can see I ran about 200 rounds through the gun today and you can see that it's fairly well soiled with powder residue. And We'll simply take this out and see where it'd fit. We'll set it down and we'll set our barrel down. And we'll come back to our action sleeve. And that easily moves off. And we can set that down in our firing pin mechanism. And you'll note that the firing pin mechanism simply sits atop here. It's actually balanced here. So as you're pulling this assembly out, you'll note that because it's balanced, you'll want to keep it straight up. And you can easily set it down, or you can take it off before you do, either way. And we'll remove the action spring or the recuperation spring. We'll set that down also. Okay. 
The first thing I like to clean is the breech bolt assembly. And you may be tempted to push the firing pin on the back. Uh, be careful if you do, you're going to watch the firing pin holding pin drop out. And this comes right out. Not necessary to remove it. You can clean it without, but you notice the spring. And I just set that down and the breech bolt assembly comes apart quite easily. It's really quite simple. To clean this, it doesn't require any solvent. So one of the very nice things about the way this gun is set up, many of the parts are coated or plated. And I just give this a little wipe and it's fine. I didn't get too much residue on my rag there. And the same thing with the bolt assembly. Clean the face where the firing pin comes out. Uh, this does have a nice coating on it. It looks like it is zinc coated, although it could have a polymer coat on it. And just clean the back a little bit. Again, no solvent necessary. This all wipes down very nicely because of the plating and coating on this. And to reassemble this, it's quite simple. We'll just run this back in here. We'll place our spring back in. And you notice I didn't clean the spring. There's really not much you could if you want. It's not really that important. Maybe if you're cleaning your gun really, really thoroughly a couple times a year, you might want to pull all the parts into pieces and clean it that way. I'll simply push it in. You'll note that there's a little slot right there that's going to allow the pin to drop in. So I will put the pin there and you'll see that the pin will just drop right into place. Very simple. And that's the cleaning of the breech bolt assembly. Now let's move on to the action bar assembly. And again, you can see how beautifully plated this is. And this also requires no solvent for cleaning. I like to come in here with a cleaning patch and run it up and down. Uh, sometimes I use my fingernail to apply a little pressure. You can see a little residue coming off here and also the inside. And the tops, nothing to it really. Cleans it very nicely and quite easily. And if you'd like, you can just feed a cloth patch in here almost like drying your pinky. The inside of the assembly will also get fouled, soiled with gun residue and powder residue and we're going to easily clean that out. We'll start just like this. Again, it needs no solvent. Just give it a turn. You're going to see this one's going to come out this patch will come out quite a bit dirtier. There, you can see that. And I'll just go to my next patch. Oops, see? And same thing. You can see the residue that's coming out. Uh, look in here and see that it's actually almost perfectly clean. A few more spots. Again, no solvent necessary. That's really ideal. This is just pressure and a patch. I get my patches usually from the Brownells catalog, which is pretty standard. I can wipe this down a little. And we have the action sleeve clean. We'll look on the inside here and 
There we have it. Next, we're ready for the recuperation spring. And I'm going to use a little white odorless mineral spirits for this. Pretty innocuous cleaner. Find it at any Lowe's or Home Depot or hardware store. I like to just run my patch through the rings of the spring. I'll just put a little mineral spirits here. And it doesn't take much. And I'm just going to run down my spring here. Now I find that the spring really doesn't get dirty, but sometimes I like to clean it. Uh, I've probably put a thousand rounds through the gun this week, and maybe it's a good time to give the spring a little more thorough cleaning. We'll take a look at the patch uh, when I'm done. But again, you can decide on your own what you want to clean, how often you want to clean it. The gun is pretty hardy. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean every time you shoot it. And you'll come up with your own maintenance schedule, or like I have, for how you want to keep your firearm clean. And if we take a look at this patch, you can see there's a fair amount of residue that came off of there. Okay, now let's move on to dropping the trigger. I have a little jeweler's hammer, maybe a little bit larger, and a uh, simple punch. This happens to be a 5 30 seconds punch. And on our receiver, we have two pins. I'm going to start by just tapping those pins, and then I'll pull them down from the other side. They're fairly easy to remove. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. And you can see, I'll just give it a little tap there, and just a little tap here. That one came out nice and easy. And this one, I can just pull this right out. Well, let's see, with my hand, I'm going to set that down, and my trigger is going to just come right out. Now, I don't often drop my trigger assembly. It doesn't really need cleaning that often, but again, you can do this as often as you wish. As you'll remember, safety was on. Safety is now off. I'm going to release the trigger by holding it, pulling the trigger, and letting it come forward. I now have access to just wiping it down. We'll see how much residue comes off. There's a little there. And I'm just going to wipe this. I really recommend you don't put any solvents, oils, silicone cleaner or anything in your trigger. It doesn't need it. Possibly when you store it, possibly mid-season, but otherwise it's going to lead to more gumming up of the assembly than anything. And the key components here are already plated. And very little residue came off this trigger. Mostly from the mechanism which hits the firing pin. And I'll simply just cock it. It's in place. Again, very simple. Uncock it, cock it, uncock it, cock it. And we're going to put it back in cocked. This is the easiest way for it to go in. Safety first, red showing, ready to fire, safety on. And of course the trigger assembly pins, sometimes they get a little bit soiled. So if, if and when I drop the trigger assembly, I like to simply wipe this down. Again, no solvents necessary. Little tiny soiling on here, not much. But it's a little therapeutic to wipe them down. 
With the trigger assembly out, I'm going to come into my receiver and just give it a little wipe with a patch. Let's see if we have any residue in here. It's uh, pretty easy to access. And again, no solvent. Uh, I'll pick up a little residue. Uh, not much. And again, this is one of those. Are you going to give this the 1,000 round cleaning or the 200 round cleaning? And uh, it's not going to pick up a lot. And with that, I'll just set this back down. Now we're going to clean the magazine. And the magazine tube is designed to be self-cleaning. After you're done shooting, of course, self-cleaning doesn't mean it's going to be free of soil, but it means that it's going to cycle your rounds. Again, I like to use clean strip white mineral spirits. It's odorless. You can pick it up at any hardware store. And I'm, in this instance, I'm going to use just a little solvent. Uh, not that necessary. You can wipe kind of hard on this, but I'm going to use a little solvent here. And I'm just going to run this up and down my magazine tube. Uh, you can see quite a bit's come off. Uh, and quite frankly, if I rubbed this tube with a dry rag, a lot of this would come off in any regard. I'm going to take my shop towel and just Give this a good rub. And remember, it doesn't need solvent. Another thing that's important to remember about this magazine tube is because of this polymer-like coating, it likes to shoot dry. So we don't oil this. On my Remington 1100s, we like to shoot those wet. I'm going to set my receiver and stock aside and move on to my piston assembly. Now with the piston assembly we can see this is very soiled again after 200 rounds and it's soiled outside and in. It looks like it's brass, it's actually steel, it has a coating on it and usually we're going to want to get this pretty clean but you can drive yourself a little crazy trying to clean this crystal clean because it's not really that easy to do and it's not really going to affect the performance of the gun. I use mineral spirits for this and I'll grab a shop rag and uh, set this down. A little mineral spirits and just get this wetted. Sometimes I'll even take a little glass, fill it with mineral spirits and drop my piston assembly in. This is going to pull off a lot of residue. But even after pulling off all the residue, we'll notice that the piston assembly still looks like it's got a lot of soiling on it. And that's what I meant by saying you could try to clean this really, really thoroughly if you want. You'll spend a lot of time on it, and it's not going to really affect the performance of the gun. And then I'll just take a relatively clean shop towel and wipe this down. Now we're going to look at the base of the piston assembly and I'll show you where you can actually remove some buildup, some residue buildup, and I've got a plastic tool I use for that. Uh, again at Brownells I bought one of these plastic tools. They look like dental picks. They're made of plastic so they won't harm your metal. And I simply went to my bench grinder and I ground off each side with a little edge on it. And I came up with a tool that looks like this. Kind of a butt end here and a little bit of a tighter end here. And I like to use this to get into tight spaces. And with my piston assembly down at the base here, I'm just going to rub this dry and see if we pick up any extra residue. 
noodles coming off. Not that important. And pretty easy to do. Like my dad always said, if you have the right tools, the job's a lot easier. If you're tempted to use WD-40 or anything else for cleaning, don't. All that will do is leave a nice kind of residue on it that you would normally use for uh, lubricating something, and it's just uh, not necessary for this gun. And that's about it. That's pretty easy on that piston assembly. Not too difficult to clean. Next, we're going to focus on the gas cylinder. Uh, this was an interesting education for me as I came to clean my gun over time. The gas cylinder is threaded, and we need to clean inside of it. And if you're like me, you want your gun clean. Oh, threads? What the heck? I threaded it off. Cleaned it, threaded it back on, took out and shot it. The gun wasn't cycling. I called the gunsmith at Caesar Granary in Maryland. They were very kind to talk me through it. They said, no, this wants to stay on permanently. You don't want to be taking this off. Well, $30, I got a new one and uh, put it on. Nothing was wrong with this one, but I wanted to keep an extra. They recommended using Loctite Red. And of course, the various Loctites have to do with the size of the threads. So a little Loctite Red, I screwed it on, tightened it by hand, left it overnight. It stays on very nice and tightly. This is the most difficult part of cleaning this gun because we need to get into a tight space here. Our gas ports are down inside. Of course, when the shell shoots, the gas escapes down the ports. It causes our mechanism to go back, eject the shell, and bring the next shell out of the magazine if there is one in there. And this is pretty difficult to clean. I find myself sometimes working really hard at this. And sometimes I just say, you know, I'm going to give it a cleaning. I'm going to take it out in the field and it cycles pretty well all the time. There is also a O-ring in here. This is a rubber or silicon O-ring. This is part of the seal. Anybody who has a Remington 1100 will recognize the O-ring that sits on a Remington 1100. This is a number 20. It's available at any plumbing store. Uh, the gunsmith at Granary was kind enough when I ordered another piston, uh, piston housing, piston cylinder to send me out a handful of them. I took one to the hardware store, matched the size, and for a couple bucks later I had myself a few of these. I removed this uh, earlier this morning just to see how it would come out. Doesn't need to come out, really not necessary, but should you ever need to replace it, pretty simple. I took my Stanley knife, I dipped the point in there, and it came right out. Just pulled, pulled it out, it's set in a groove there. Now on to cleaning this. Uh, this is going to clearly need some mineral spirits. Um, I've tried everything, and I mean everything, including brake cleaner, which I will uh, use here in a little bit. And white mineral spirits works the best. Uh, I've put hoppies in there for barrel cleaner, and sometimes I use our GS barrel cleaner, and it works okay as well. And I use my trusty tool at times. And sometimes I'll go in there and I'll just run it in there dry. And uh, I will pick some residue out. And I'm seeing in here, and I'll show you in a minute. We'll get a close-up of this. You'll see the silver ring. Let me just uh, tap that down. And you'll see inside here the silver ring that came from just a dry tool running around the inside. Now, I do like to go and give this a little cleaning with my dry tool. So whatever cleaner I'm using, 
they tend to dissolve it a little and then they tend to get a little bit hardened and sometimes they build up. It makes it a little bit more difficult to get at. That's about it there and I can get down closer by where the piston ring is. <clears throat> and now I'm just going to take a larger shop rag. I'm going to douse that in my mineral spirits and get in there and do a gentle cleaning. I've got a few other tricks I've come up with. One uh, I've used, I'll show you, uh, but we're just going to start with pretty basic mineral spirits. And you're going to see when I pull this rag out, it's going to pick up a lot, a lot of gunpowder residue. Look at that. And we're going to just uh, turn the rag around and go at it again. And then I'll show you one of my little tricks here. Yep, we're getting quite a bit of residue out of there. Now, I've tried this both ways. I've tried both cleaning this thing so it's crisp and clean, spick and span. And I've tried leaving a little residue in there and not being too concerned about it. And I'll tell you, it cycles either way. So you let your time decide how much you want to do it. Again, I find cleaning my gun very therapeutic. Get up in the morning and give it a once over before I go shooting. And once I get the large uh, shop rag in there, I like to come in with a little patch. And again, you can see it's still picking up residue. Now, my little trick is to take a Brownells bronze brush, which of course is not as uh, hard on the hardness scale as steel, therefore it won't scratch. And I use this Brownells bronze brush, 12 gauge, of course they make them in the 20 gauge, they make them also in the 410 gauge, and I have different size brushes. And I have the end of a cleaning rod. This one's an aluminum cleaning rod. And I just uh, thread it on for a hand tool. I will sometimes, I'll just put this in the drill. Uh, I'm about to make a shorter one. I'm gonna cut this and just make a little drill bit out of it. I can easily come in here and uh, just I'll wet this a little bit and uh, you know I'll just run my bronze brush in there a little bit makes me feel better like I'm getting a little bit more of the powder residue I'll come back in with the patch and I probably picked up a little more and uh, let's see what my patch looks like. Yeah, I picked up a little more from my bronze brush. Now, I have one more little trick. I think you'll benefit from this. Um, I do have my Brownells plastic tool. Recall that our gas ports are here and here. And I'll show you. I'm going to take my tool and go right into the gas port. These gas ports tend to stay open, but you want to be sure they stay open. And so I'll put my tool in, but I'll also use the brake cleaner, and that's just plain old brake cleaner. I bought mine at the local CarQuest. Uh, and I'm going to just easily put my nozzle into my gas port. Give it a little spray. It's going to come out the end here. And another little spray. And that's it. It's pretty simple. I'll wipe that down with another patch. Probably pick up a little more residue. Uh, yep, there's a little more residue. As I say, you could be wiping this pretty much for an hour 
or maybe you're listening to some Led Zeppelin and uh, you want to get through the whole album. A little extra residue and that's about it. Next thing I like to do is I like to clean my barrel. Uh, I found that RGS bore stripper works quite well. It's available in West Bend, Indiana. Of course, it's available online. Interesting thing about the RGS, comes in a 16 fluid ounce container, sells for about $15 online, but it's a liquid, it's not an aerosol, and that means that you're getting a lot. This bottle you can see is down to here. I shoot two to three times a week. I clean my bore after every time I shoot. Uh, this has lasted me for several months so far, so I've been pretty happy with the way this works. This is pretty straightforward. This is very similar to cleaning any other bore. Uh, this pulls away the plastic and gun residue. I'm just going to soak my patch in this. I'm going to attach it to my little chug here. And uh, run it back and down. Now, the fab arm barrels have a forcing cone which allows this to have lower recoil and higher accuracy and uh, I'm just going to push that out Let's see if it comes out here and by the way the um, tightness in here is actually in fact the forcing cone. I'm going to push this through. It's going to pop out. It's going to be a little aggressive. There we go. You can use a slightly thinner pad but of course with the RGS you can see uh, we've pulled an awful lot of residue out. I don't reuse these patches. Not necessary. Um, I'm just Lay it down. I'll wet another one with my bore stripper. And I'll run this back through again. Generally, the second pass is easier. I like to pull this back and forth a little bit. And uh, there we go. The barrel end where it meets the housing is as well plated and this with bore stripper cleans up pretty easily. Look at that. This comes comes right off. Were that all parts and all guns manufactured all over the world made like this, it sure would be easy to clean. And I'll get at that a little bit later, but it doesn't take much. The bore stripper does of course leave a little oil residue. And uh, that's good for your bore. And uh, that was easy enough. And what I'm going to do now is I really like my Tico tool. And it's soft, it's absorbent, and I find that I'll run my Tico tool through and uh, with a little bore stripper. Uh, forcing cones gives it no difficulty. And uh, I know I'll piss, pick up the re rest of my residue, so I just, just a little bore stripper here. Oops, see, it doesn't take much. And uh, I'll run this through. I'll have my towel handy because you'll see I'm going to wipe off the end when it comes through. Yeah, it's pretty easy, just back and forth. Well, look at that. And you can see at the end here, I picked up a lot of extra residue. That's why I like my Tico tool. And I just wipe this off. Look, at this comes off. And uh, I'll do this a couple times. I've got a nice clean barrel now. I like to look down there in the light. Yeah, that thing's as clean as a whistle, as it should be. I always like to check my gas ports in a semi-automatic firearm. And I'm going to take my Brownells tool and just... Uh, run it inside there. There's nothing in there I can see, but I like to one last check. <laughs> Sounds good. No residue came out when I did that, so I know these ports are nice and clean. And my barrel's ready for reassembly. My gun's clean. 
Uh, about the only thing I didn't address is my forend. Uh, this is made of beautiful Turkish walnut. I had the pleasure of trying to clean it with a little citrus degreaser the other day and uh, dropped a little uh, degreaser on my beautiful Turkish walnut and noticed it uh, looked like a little milk stain on a piece of wood, which I wasn't real happy about. I was able to rub that out and that got me to thinking, probably a good idea to take some good old fashioned Johnson's paste wax and uh, wax this, which is exactly what I did. And it's uh, been impervious to anything since then. Didn't take me much time. I figured probably a good thing to do. From time to time, you're going to maybe want to get in here and clean this. Interestingly enough, I found for the inside of this wood that the citrus degreaser works pretty well. Uh, probably any household cleanser is going to work well. Today we're not going to really clean it. It's fine. I cleaned it recently. It doesn't need to be cleaned all the time. But it does get a little powder buildup. So now we're going to reassemble our gun. I'm going to set my barrel down and pick up my receiver. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my trigger group in. And I want to uh, show you that when you drop this trigger group in, uh, you need to make sure that your spring assembly is basically pushed in. Now we're going to get to that through this way. Now fortunately there's no surfaces in here that will cut you. Unfortunately on my old Remington 1100 there were a couple surfaces where if you put your finger in like this you'd have a nice razor cut and be bleeding. So I'm going to come in and uh, I'm going to work with that spring as I push my trigger assembly in. The trigger assembly drops right in. Again, my trigger is cocked. Again, my safety is on. And you'll see if I drop my trigger assembly in, uh, it's only going to go so far because of the spring assembly. So I'll first drop my assembly in like this. And you'll see that by pushing the release mechanism from the inside, my trigger really will drop neatly into place. And there it is, neatly in place. Uh, I will say this is significantly easier than getting your trigger into your Remington 1100. Uh, that's got the uh, spring load in the back here. Uh, it tends to be a little finicky. And we're going to look and just make sure our holes are aligned because we're going to use our hand and put our pins back in. And I'll just take the first pin and uh, I'll look down and make sure I'll jiggle this just a little bit. Make sure I'm lined up. There's not much play in there. And uh, I generally can get it down with my Get it in with my hand first. Sometimes in there, there it went, see? And usually I can get it in. Uh, sometimes I might tap it, but yeah, look at that. Just with my hand, it wasn't too difficult. And snaps into place. That's nice. It does take, I'll remind everybody, it does take a punch to tap it out, but it doesn't take much pressure, which is nice. There's a good, tight fit in there. And again, I'll push the second one in. And there you have it. My trigger is assembled, which is nice and easy. I'm next going to take my spring, place it over my magazine tube, And then I'll take my action bar assembly. Let's set this here. And remember, this simply fits right on top. Pretty straightforward. Of course, this is towards the back. Now, one thing I have learned is I'm actually going to add a little oil 
And this is the only place that I'm going to oil this fine weapon. And it's going to be right along here. Because I find that as it's moving inside the receiver, this little bit of oil helps it cycle. I use uh, a simple hoppies. Um, nothing special here. I just uh, I'm going to drop a little oil there. I'm going to take a patch. I'm just going to wipe it in a little bit. Actually, I can easily just remove this and just give it a little light coating. I don't need much, want much oil there. I give it a little light coating. Uh, oops. And remember, as I had uh, said before, uh, this pin drops out pretty easily. Be sure you're always working over the table so it doesn't disappear on you. And uh, I'll line this up and it'll drop right back in. There it goes. And just make sure my oil is uh, not leaving much here. Got to get a nice little oil. I'm going to give this another little run. You can see I haven't used much, but I just apply it there, run it down. And that's going to be the only place that I oil this gun. No oil on the magazine, no oil in the trigger group. Uh, this gun does not like to be shot wet. Uh, and uh, after a little oil, I'm good to go. I'm going to reassemble it on top. Again, remember, this will just come off. It's not held on there any other way. It is held in place with the action lever, but the action lever goes in later. So we have a little balancing we'll do here. And I'll take my gun and I will feed it here. And there we have it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it back and it's going to actually cock the mechanism when I do run it back. You heard that. And it's cocked. Next thing I'm going to do is, and one of the reasons I like to use a stand is because the way this gun's designed is when you're shooting and you want to put the next shell in, it's simple with our action spring here and it will release the next shell in. However, if you find yourself laying this gun down, receiver up, you'll see that your spring will release your action bar. Well, that's another reason I like to use a stand. It lets me leave this up in the air. And now I'm going to replace the lever. Again, remember, the owner's manual said we could use an empty shell to pry this out, but you saw that with my glove and a little jiggle, I was able to pull this right up by hand. When the gun was brand new, uh, it was a little tighter than that, so I uh, had to play with it a bit, but now it's got a little age on it. Again, it's only four or five months old. Uh, it uh, comes out pretty easily. I'm going to place this back in now, and uh, like so. You hear the nice snap. I know it's loaded, uh, loaded inside, and my, uh, my bar is uh, set in place firmly. I'm all set here, and the next thing for me to do is to simply put on my barrel Recall that the action bar needs to be forward and I'm going to now release this gently and that's going to be spring here, holding my lever here. I'm going to release this gently, let it come forward gently, my receiver as my action bar assembly forward now. And 
I'll take my self-cleaning piston assembly. I'll just insert it here where it came from very easily. I'll hold on to it with my finger. I'll stand my gun up and I will feed this in. Now there's more than one way to do this. Of course, I could just have my piston assembly here. That works just as well. Either way is fine. You can see, and now I'm going to push my gun barrel into place. It's in place. We heard a nice solid sound. I'm going to take my Turkish walnut forend. Uh, it feeds nicely. I'm going to take my forend cap. and just hand tighten it. There's no reason to do anything but hand tighten the foreign cap. There is a place for an Allen wrench. That is for the foreign weights that come with the gun. And there's no need to think about doing any more tightening on this than just by hand, pretty simple. Of course, safety first. I'm going to release the action here. And again, empty chamber, very important. And my safe is on. From here, what I would do is I would place my snap cap in my chamber. I would gently release this. I would pull the trigger to release the trigger spring and I would be finished and ready to put this in storage. I hope this has been really helpful. I really enjoy my gun. I like to shoot it a lot. It does require a little more cleaning than what would be normal with the Remington 1100 that you might be used to, or perhaps a Beretta 391. It cycles beautifully, it shoots beautifully, and I enjoy shooting this a great deal. Thank you.